So, let's say that you've dipped your toes into Blender and even explored some basic Python scripting in it. And if you haven't, don't worry. You can check out this other video I made for a rundown on setting up and getting started with Blender scripting using Python. But in this video, I want to dive into a pretty cool Blender feature for scripting and automation, the Python console. This Python console is a panel like any other in the Blender interface. You can of course get it in the dedicated scripting layout, but you can also simply replace one of the parts of the default layout interface, thanks to the little icon in the top left corner over here. As we said in the Getting Started video, the console is a way to run Python commands directly, line by line, without having to write and execute a script. Basically, it lets you see and manipulate properties of objects in real time, which is super helpful if you want to get hands-on with your scenes or create custom tools. For example, take the famous Blender default cube that is sitting here in the middle of our scene. Let's start with that and look at how we can mess around with its properties. Ok, so the cube is an object, right? To get it, we can redo what we did in our first script example and type in bpy.data.objects cube in our console. When we press enter, you see that the console directly answers with a reference to this object. So this line is the output of our command, which this time is directly given us in the Python console. Though, to actually store this reference and be able to reuse it in our following commands, as long as we're into this console context, we should put it in a variable, like this. And now we can access any properties or methods that the cube has. So let's see how that works. Alright, now that we have a reference to our default cube, let's do something with it. Since it's a 3D object in our scene, we can, for example, get its position in the world by accessing its location property and pressing enter. Blender once again outputs the results to the console, and we see that this time it's a vector 3, with all of its components equal to 0, because our cube is currently at the origin, so its x, y, and z coordinates are 0. Similarly, if we wanted to set this position, we could press the up arrow to copy back our latest command in the console history, and then type in the new location that we want. This time, we reaccess the location property of our object, but we assign a new value to it. And since it's a 3D vector, we need to pass it three components, which we can do by defining a Python list, as shown here by these delimiting square brackets, and inside we've got our three numbers, one per axis. Of course, we could do the same kind of thing for the other parts of our cube's transform, the rotation and the scale, and Blender obviously lets us play with just one axis at a time, if we prefer, by adding an extra .x, .y, or .z. Or let's say that you want to rename your object, then all you have to do is reassign its name property. Ok, but all of this does beg the question. How exactly can you know which properties and methods are accessible on an object, or a data resource? Are you supposed to just learn the entire API reference by heart? Well, luckily, no, you don't have to. In fact, the Python console has a great feature, a really nice auto-completion system. Whenever you're stuck, you can try to press the Tab key to let the engine try and guess how you could finish this part of your command. The idea is that it will look at all the possibilities given what you've written so far and what actually exists on your objects, given their type, and it will either print out the options or auto-complete it for you if there is only one that is valid. In short, if you want to know which properties and methods an object has, just type its reference in the console, then add a dot symbol, and press the tab key. Blender will help you out by listing all the possibilities in alphabetical order. Then, as you start to write something, it will filter out this list to give you just the elements that start with what you've written so far. So now you know how to retrieve some item in your scene using its name and then inspect its properties and methods. But if you want to reference the currently selected items specifically, then there's actually another way you can do it. That's where bpy.context comes in. If you take a look at the homepage of the Blender Python API, for example in its Blender 4.2 version, which I'm using here, 
You'll notice that here we've got a list of the submodules inside the BPY package. Submodules are a Python thing. They are namespaces in your library. So basically, here they are like subgroups in our toolbox of Blender commands that organize the various operators and actions into logical bits to make it easier to find them. And in particular, at the top, you've got the two submodules that you'll use the most when you start your Blender scripting journey. BPY context and BPY data. Okay, so we've already talked a bit about BPY data, but what's the difference between the two exactly? To put it simply, BPY context is all about what's active in Blender right now. So if you've got the default cube selected, bpy.context.object will refer to that object. On the other hand, bpy.data is more general. It has every piece of data in your scene, no matter what's currently selected. You'll therefore use bpy.context when you're scripting things that rely on what's selected, and bpy.data when you're reaching out to grab specific objects by name, or directly access global scene data. As a quick note, it's important to remember that even if you deselect an object in the viewport, Blender will keep it as the last active one in the context. Also, when you're using Blender's Python console, you can use two quick shortcuts to access the elements in those submodules, as explained at the beginning of your console session. Uppercase C stands for bpy.context, and uppercase D stands for bpy.data. So instead of typing bpy.context, you can just type C, and instead of bpy.data, you can type D. Again, it's case sensitive. So if you use lowercase c and d, it won't work, but this will make things way faster once you've got the hang of it. Now, just to get a bit more familiar with all this context stuff, let's quickly see how we can select or deselect our Blender objects via Python. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that we can quickly get all kinds of current selections in our bpy.context object, such as the currently selected 3D objects in the scene with the aptly named selected objects property. But another important thing to note is that this selected objects property is a list. Because remember that in Blender, we can have multiple objects selected at the same time. That's why we also have an active object property to tell us which one of those selected objects is currently the active one. By the way, that's the equivalent of the lighter orange highlight in the viewport compared to the darker reddish orange for the selected non-active objects. Alright, now let's say that we wanted to try and select our cube instead of our camera, but we want to do it entirely via Python. To do that, could we just reassign this active object property and be done with it? Well, sadly, no. As you can see here, this property is read-only, meaning that we can only access its value and not set it ourselves. In fact, to change our selection, we needed to proceed in a few steps. First, we'll reference our cube via the bpy.data submodule and select it by calling its select set method with a true boolean value. Then we'll change the currently active object via the view layer inside our Blender context. And finally, we'll deselect our camera by calling its select set method with a false value. And there we are! We've managed to update our selection, all using Python, and we can now use any context sensitive function we want on this cube rather than the camera. And on that note, here you go! This was a quick overview of how to use Blender's Python console and how to access objects, properties, and methods. I hope you enjoyed this Blender scripting video, as always don't forget to like it if it was helpful, hit the subscribe button for more, and leave a comment with any questions or ideas for Blender scripting tricks that you'd like to learn. And of course, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.